Welcome back to Manama Across New Horizons. I'm Dear Darling. As we see what's going on on our lovely island of Horn Hollow today, where we'll be basically talking about Eurovision 2023, if you can tell from the title, because of the finals took place yesterday. Um, I'm not going to be recreating anything like that if, if you don't know what's going on this is just my, my video diary if you're a new person here where i just talk about random stuff and today is eurovision 2023 um so yeah that, that happened yesterday uh what did i think of it i think on the whole it, it was okay you know uh i don't think it's my favorite eurovision in history um and that, that's not even like because of like quote quote the controversy you know no i'm not even sure if it really counts as controversy to be honest but you know drama perhaps but anyway good evening everyone right now in four hundred it's 8 30 p.m on sunday may 14th 2023 um i still think my favorite might be from like a couple years ago or something <laughs> and I, I need to think about like what songs are in it but there was quite a few songs in like I think it was a bit of a toy one, one where a toy one. Um, there was quite a few songs where I liked them. If it wasn't that one, it was the one after that one. And I don't really remember off the top of my head, unfortunately. But yeah, basically on the whole, you know, I'm going to spoil Eurovision 2023. If you haven't seen results, I would be surprised. Um, if you are someone who cares about it and you still haven't seen results, if you don't know what it is, it's basically a big old music competition, I suppose, which happens uh, where every single country in Europe um, and some outside of Europe to be honest um also submit like one entry of a musical um, a musical entry uh, of a song and an artist performing it and then you know everyone performs it and then uh, there's a jury who votes on who's who's the best and um uh you can telephone in and vote on who you think is best and then that's basically the gist of it it's basically just a big old music composition but you should know that it's very theatrical it's very over the top it's very silly um it doesn't take itself super seriously it's not like um a virtuoso competition it's very much like showmanship is sort of like the name of a game performance and appeal is the the coup de gras. um but yeah the, the, there were some songs i like you might be like what songs were your favorite i think my favorite song was lithuania song uh if i recall um but who did i think was that uh, was gonna win i thought norway or uh italy were gonna win um but it, as it turns out sweden won it, it's also a weird thing because sweden was actually the only um performance i didn't see in full uh you might be like what do you think of it i thought i thought it was fine like um loreen is actually um it, it's a wilder story because like i saw the performance like towards the end and i just said to my friend hey this person really looks like the sweden entry who won back in 2012 with euphoria and he was like I don't know how I'm meant to respond to that because I don't know who won. I don't know that performer back in 2012. Turns out it is the same person, you know, because I missed the intro, so I didn't know that. Um, yeah, uh, Laureen, she, she, she's back again to, you know, try and win again. And, well, she did uh, with a song called Two. Um, you might be like, what do you think of a song? I thought it was fine, you know. I, I think I gave it a 7 out of 10, which is definitive good in my books. You know, it wasn't my favourite, but I didn't hate it either. Um, I don't like it as much as Euphoria. Uh, to be perfectly honest but you know that's just own personal taste and it's definitely not my favorite in the entire thing and definitely not what I thought would have won <laughs> um, because I thought Norway on Finland definitely probably would have won uh, but they didn't um, which is a shame to say because I've, I, I did quite like it, it's weird because Finland's entry I didn't actually like the song but I liked how Eurovision-y it was <laughs> so I, the actual song like the actual on the whole, I think I gave it like a 6.5 because I, I I wasn't really vibing with a song, but I was like, I appreciate it, you know. It's a sort of thing where like, I wouldn't be upset if it's one, you know, the, similar to like um Toy from like Netta and Netia or whatever um, her name was, I can't remember, way back when, um, where it was just like, I don't really like the song that much, but if she won, I would not be upset because it's very you originally. Anyway, so now I, I suppose we'll just have a quick sort of run through all, all, all the countries and the songs and how well I remember them and like if I liked them or not. So starting off the night, we had Austria with Who Who the Heck is Edgar? Um, Edgar being Edgar Allan Poe. I thought it was an okay song. You know, I, I think it was definitive baseline five or four-ish, to be honest. Like it, it, I didn't love it, to be perfectly honest, but I thought it was fine. It is quite silly. It's quite eurovision -y, so I can't really fault it in that regard. Uh, next was Mimi Cat from Portugal, where I thought she was actually a really nice singer. It just wasn't a very eurovision -y song. So I can't really remember what it goes like. It was sort of just like, wow, this is like a really nice performance. If this wasn't a Eurovision Song Contest, I'd probably be more into it, to be honest. Uh, Switzerland, Watergun, I actually liked quite a lot. I uh, actually quite like the performance. This is one of the earlier ones, which I think I must have given like a 7 or 8, because I was like, hey, this is pretty good, you know. But this might be one of, one of my favourite. It was my favourite thus far, but there's only three songs, so, you know, perhaps not a lot to um, compare with. Poland had Solo, which 
I thought was okay. I I was like, hey, solo, just like, you know, the Clean Bandit song featuring Demi Lovato. And I listened to it and I was like, this song sounds really similar to that song. Um, it's not, of course, exactly the same. The tune's different and that sort of thing. But it's sort of like the vibes of it are pretty similar. Um, according to my uh, my friend, he listened to the Spotify version. He was like, the Spotify version is so much better than the actual performance version, which he said was a quite a con- consistent thing with a lot of uh, the entries this year was the fact that the recorded versions were a lot better than the performance versions, which I don't know if that's necessarily true or not. I haven't listened to it. Poland, your song was fine. Uh, Serbia, Serbia's I didn't particularly like um, that much. <laughs> like, I, I don't know, I just didn't really ja- jam with it. I didn't jive with it, to be perfectly honest. So I think I just gave it like an average score. France, I actually liked quite a lot, you know, all things considered. And I was surprised it didn't score that highly. It, it scored okay. Like, I think it was like middle of a pack. But it was like, I, I genuinely thought that I had a good chance to win, to be honest. But so be it. Um, because I feel like there's a small sort of like meta creeping up in um, Eurovision, you know, ever since that, I think it was Ukrainian um, person, the, the one who sings like, da 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 I can't remember how it goes. Um, but she's got the green sleeves, you know, and the green puppy sleeves, it was like from three years ago, whatever. It's called like Fump or something. No, that doesn't sound right. <laughs> I can't remember what it's called. Um, anyway, she performed in this year Eurovision contest. This year, so you, you might know who she is, but she's got like this very sort of like tribal beat heavy sort of da 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 da. That's how the song goes, um, which is a sort of thing which I feel like is starting to creep into the matter. You know, we're shifting away from power ballads into that sort of genre, but you know, I think it's a fun genre. You know, it's a fun change up. You know, whenever the meta changes here and there, I'm all for it. Uh, Cypress, Cypress, I actually like quite a lot, to be honest. You know. I thought I also had a decent chance to win, but I also, at the same time, I was like, you know, I don't think people like power ballads all that much anymore. I feel like I'm so, not that I'm so passe, but people are kind of like bored with them. You know, I think if you're doing like a power ballad or some sort um, with like really emotional moving lyrics, it's going to be pretty hard for you to win nowadays because most people are sort of just like, oh, not another one of these. That's just my hunch. Spain, I'm going to be honest, I did not like Spain's. Um, Spain and Albania, I remember standing out to me where I was just like, I'm not driving with a song. To be honest, I have a performance. Why can I not exit out of this? Um, where I was just like, I'm not really driving with a song. I have a performance. Is okay, but it's not really like blowing me away or anything like that. So I can't really give it that high a score <laughs> uh, or anything like that. Uh, to two, as I said, I thought it was good. Uh, but I wasn't, I wasn't like, wow. I wasn't like, wow, this is the best thing I've ever heard or anything. I wasn't like, this is my favourite to win. It was just like, yeah, this is good. Albania, as I said, I, I just wasn't driving with it, to be perfectly honest. I just, I don't know. <laughs> um italy's italy's i thought was genuinely quite good i thought it was like if if a power ballad is going to win this is probably the power ballad for which will win it because um he, he had a really nice voice you know his performance wasn't like over the top or ostentatious or anything it was just like a good performance but maybe that's why maybe it didn't just like stand out enough i don't know um estonia estonia's i wanted to like more than i did to be honest you know I was like, I wanted to give it more, but like the song just like I don't know, I didn't, I didn't quite hook me. I liked, I liked her outfit. I thought the performance was nice, you know, it was cool. You self playing piano and that sort of thing. It's just like, and it really felt like I should like the song more, but I just didn't, and it just didn't grip me. Finland, as, as I said, cha cha cha, which very much uh, the fan favorite of the entire competition, I think, um, and only really lost because the jury did not give it many votes, to be honest. And um, yeah, <laughs> uh, I, I was, I saw it and I was like, this is very Eurovision. I would not be surprised if I definitely was like, this is the fan favorite for this year. Um, whether it's going to win or not, I was like, I think it's got a pretty good chance, but unfortunately it didn't. Um, but yeah, it would, it would have been cool, certainly. And that, honestly, this is where most of the drama comes from, is because Laureen is a previous winner who's come back and she's won again or whatever, and people are like, oh, she's been unfi- unfairly biased towards because of a jury vote. Uh, people hate the jury now because people want to see their own fan favourites win, which is, you know, I get it. That, that that does make sense. Like, obviously, the audience wants to see what the audience voted for win, and it feels a little bit silly having the jury have 50%, I suppose, of a... Oh, my God, we haven't had a leaf stool. 50% of the influence of the uh, deciding outcome, despite the fact we don't even know who's on the jury, we don't know if they're actually biased or not, etc, etc. Especially with a drama like last year or whatever, where like some countries were in a coalition with each other to vote for each other, which was just like, that's obviously not in the spirit of Eurovision, and I can't believe you would sally his name like that, but so be it. Um, I think people are getting kind of like sort of embittered to, embittered to the jury, but hey-ho. 
I, I understand also why the jury's there, I suppose, in the first place. Well, theoretically, but has it always executed on that? No. Yeah. Like, I don't think my problem with the jury is that the jury is different from what the fan votes want, I suppose. It's just sort of like... Um, I don't know. It's, it's very much like you, you can sort of tell what the jury's going to vote for because it's not necessarily like the best performance or best song necessarily which i feel like we're going for except for it's more like they've got a certain style which they like where like this is a very marketable song i suppose i suppose the point is i feel like you know going outside the norms a bit of like creative creativity often isn't rewarded enough by by the jury i feel like they like to play it safe too much that's my own personal opinion but i don't hate the jury i'm gonna be perfectly honest i'm and you know i, I feel like drama crops up every year where a lot of people are like oh this one shouldn't have won this one should have won it happens <laughs> Sorry about that little bit of a pause. Um, I forgot what I was saying. To be honest, uh, we were just, we were just ranking for songs. Um, to be honest, and I was talking about jury. You know, I've, I've said my piece about it. About, about about it. Um, but if if you uh, if you're not from Europe and you haven't been following you or you haven't been following Eurovision, you've been wondering what's going on. That's basically the sort of drama from uh, this year. Um, and I, I, I'm staying relatively impartial to it, where it's sort of just like, you know, <laughs> which one should have won? I don't know. Which one do I think should have won? I don't know. Which one deserved to win? I don't know. Um, sorry, not now, Raymond. You know, not feeling up for it. Um, uh, the next one was Czechia's one, which was My Sister's Crown. I thought it was the right song. I, I wasn't, like, particularly enamoured by it or anything. It was, like, you know, fine. Same with Australia, where I was, like, it's fine. <laughs> I always talk about this, but Australia had my favourite song, I think, in all of history of Eurovision. Um, it was with a sound of silence. It was so, so good. I loved it so much. And it came second, and I was like, no. <laughs> um, but it was, like, my first entry or something to Eurovision. I was like, this is it was, it's beautiful. It's, like, it, one of my favourite songs I've ever heard, I think. <laughs> Da 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 sound of silence. But it probably would have been a bit weird, I suppose, of uh, Australia winning. Uh, because then it's like, oh, you know, no, now it's being held on Australia next year. Or probably what would most likely happen would be like, oh, it'll be held in a different country or something instead of Australia. I don't know. Um, just like this year, where it was like not held in Ukraine, but, you know, hosted by, by Ukraine. But, well, no, hold on. <laughs> well, Ukraine was the host, quote, quote, but UK was the actual host country. Um... Belgium. I thought Belgium was was actually pretty good. I, I, I'd say it was. I, well, I think I rated it good. <laughs> I mean, is I remember at the time I was like, this is my favorite one thus far, and I, I still like it. I'm not sure if it's necessarily my favorite. <laughs> I, I think I probably overrated it a little bit, uh, to be perfectly honest. But I still like it. You know, it's still certainly like an eight. It's, it's definitely above seven, seven or above. Um, but I think I gave it like a nine in my ratings or something. Um, Moldova. Moldova was also actually thought was pretty good. Just, you know, just like good six, seven, something like that. Norway's, I think I like Norway's, right, uh, Queen of Kings, and this is the one I thought was going to win, but it just did terribly in the jury rates from what I recall, it was just like, whoa, I, I genuinely did not expect um, Norway to do so poorly, it was like, it, it feels like it has a nice sort of mix of potential Eurovision-ness, you know, it's a little bit silly, a little bit theatrical, I suppose, well, not, not silly necessarily, but and she's got a really good voice, it's just like, you know, it doesn't take itself too seriously, but it's got a sense of drama behind it too um it did really well with the audience votes I, th I think it was like it had like 17 from a jury or something I and mean like 200 and something from audience votes where it really got catapulted upwards um germany G germany i think came last you know it was, it was classic sort of like uk and germany we, we always take up the bottom two ranks um i don't think germany's was that bad bad to be honest i'm, I'm surprised it got like that poorly rated you know it was just on a sort of like glam pop uh, glam pop glam glam rock um sort of song and you know I, I guess maybe it wasn't it didn't really resonate with a lot of people because maybe like glam rock is not that popular um because some, sometimes rock ones and metal ones do pretty well you know see man skin from like um two years ago or whatever there was also like that, that other norwegian one from that year where it was like put your middle fingers up in me uh something like that which i also thought was actually pretty good from that year I'm, I'm, is that the year i'm thinking of which is my favorite year maybe i need, I need to think of what else was there to be perfectly honest. Oh my god, my ear is so itchy. Uh, then we had Lithuania, which was my favourite one. Um, which was basically just a power ballad. I like my power ballads, okay? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be perfectly honest. <laughs> I'm not afraid to say it. Power ballads are my sort of jam, to be honest. Um, so you might be like, you must have been living for it when, when that was like the meta for Eurovision. Which, uh, I don't know. I, I, I mainly like to see a whole variety, I suppose, of different songs in Eurovision. First and foremost, rather than, you know, songs which only appeal to me. <laughs> I, I like just seeing like unique aesthetics, I suppose, come up. 
um then israel had unicorn which i thought was pretty good um if it felt like a very sort of modern pop song from what i can tell <laughs> um I, I thought it always had a decent chance of winning or you know similar to like spain last year where it was like it would do pretty well but not quite cinch out the victory slovenia slovenia's I, I generally don't remember all that well i think i started getting really tired towards the end because i had a big dinner <laughs> lots of snacks so i was like oh, i'm like absolutely wiped by the end of this uh but slovenia was probably was fine Croatia's, i'm gonna be honest i did not drive drive with Croatia's, but it was pretty popular with the audience to be honest and the uk's um i didn't really like the performance of it that much but you know apparently on it's way better like studio version is like way better than the actual performance um which i don't know if that's true is that true is that not true who knows um but yeah <laughs> i don't realize there were so many things in the grand final i suppose in the final performance and what, what what's going on I know, I know they had a lot of previous like winners or previous people who did really well um but apparently they had netta on it they had daddy fryer Cornelia Jacobs. I remember seeing Cornelia Jacobs and Duncan Lawrence. And a few other people in the intro. Hold on, do it. Do we have the intro people? Here as well? Maybe? I don't really know. Anyway, so that was basically Eurovision 2023 in a nutshell. Um, yeah, it was like, as I say, why, why is my ear so itchy? Um, Sweden ended up winning. Norway came second. I think Israel came third. I don't really remember. But it was like Norway... Oh, sorry, Finn came second, then Norway came fourth, and then I don't even remember. And UK just came pretty low down, <laughs> which is, you know, a bit of a sad follow-up, I suppose, compared to Sam Ryder from last year, where he was, like, second, which he, you know, did insanely well for the UK. My, my ear is so insanely itchy, I have no idea what's going on. Um, but, you know, it happens. You win some, you lose some. <laughs> and, I mean, to be fair, Sam Ryder's space band was a one where I was like, this is genuinely, I think, my favourite you know, track from the entirety of last year. <laughs> um, the only one which would come close was the, the, the Give Out Wolf a Banana one because it felt so Eurovision to me. Which I'm surprised it didn't do as well as it did. <laughs> I don't know. Silly, silly sort of like light-hearted ones always I feel like do pretty well, you know, like Croatia's one from this year. <laughs> but I'm going to be honest, I just I just personally did not drive with um, Croatia's one. Did I just miss out? Did I miss out Cyprus? No, no, I didn't miss out Cyprus. I said I like Cyprus quite a lot. Um, yeah, that's about it. What else happened? You know, it was called to see Graham Norton, I suppose, actually on the host, as a host on the stage. Mel, Mel Gidroy was um pseudo-commentator, sub-commentator. Which is pretty cool. You know, she's a very positive person. Known for Great British Bake Off. She was on Taskmaster as well. Um... Yeah, I don't know, Eurovision. <laughs> it was a it was a it was okay, yeah. You know. I don't think it's gonna be one which stands out in my memory necessarily. But it's sort of like, yeah, maybe there were some good songs. <laughs> um Yeah, they just had a good time. And you don't know, if if you're not from Europe or you didn't watch it, go go ahead, go look go look up Eurovision channel, Eurovision Song Contest channel. You can you can go see like all the videos and most recent ones, or you know, you can see the winner. The winner runner up, you know, go go see Laureen Tattoo and Ka 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 ha cha 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 and you can decide for yourself i suppose which one you think should have won but hey history history has already been written so nothing can change about that anyway i'm gonna have this episode off here so if you have been watching thank you very much it's been animal Cross new horizons i've been dear darling likes comments subscription shares greatly appreciated twitter discord down below hope we can see each other again but for now it's our farewells until next time bye bye for now <laughs>